Hello, everyone. Uh, if you didn't catch the intro, just to recap real fast, uh, my name is Steve Yang, and I'm a data scientist at Uber on the marketing data science R&D team. Um, today, Zushi, Edwin, and I are going to discuss a Python package we're working on open sourcing called Orbit. Um, Orbit is a package for Bayesian, uh, Bayesian time series modeling and forecasting using STAN as its uh, core inference engine. And um, to kind of jump into that topic today, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the use cases that we have on the marketing data science team. Um, and then uh, we'll kind of go through the package designs. You will go through the math um, of, the, of the model we implemented and, and uh, its comparison to other commonly used time series models um, and some performance benchmarks. And finally, um, Edwin will uh, lead a discussion session with some Q&A. So um, to jump right on in, uh, I want to outline some, some use cases here. And um, one of those is a media mix model. And a media mix model measures the impact of various marketing levers on some specified business KPI. Uh, so for example, um, to make the rest of this slide a little more concrete, let's just say like new user signups is the KPI that we want to measure. Um, and then we can think of those signups as a function of a bunch of marketing levers, a bunch of control factors, and um, uh, as a, um, a function of signups throughout time, uh, historically. And then um, ultimately, we're interested in learning the impact of each of these marketing levers. Um, and if we can learn this relationship, we can sort of use these learned parameters of the media mix models for some of the following tasks. Um, so historical channel attribution, uh, meaning how much did each channel contribute to the incremental lift in new user signups, scenario planning, uh, how will pulling different levers affect the number of signups in a future time period, or uh, budget optimization. So what should we spend on each channel in a future time period such that we can uh, maximize our number of signups? Um, so a model of this nature um, that is not only meant to capture correlation, but um, be used for causal inference uh, in, in future periods um, requires more than just good fit and accurate predictions. Um, so some of these are other requirements that we needed, which ultimately led to us um, working on Orbit. But we also needed um, robust parameter estimates that are meaningful and interpretable. Uh, meaning we don't expect the impact of marketing levers to change drastically through different time periods, um, even if we are estimating and fitting this model um, regularly and, and updating these weights, uh, we, we shouldn't see uh, wide, large, drastic swings um, on these estimates. Um, and we want to use the parameters to make meaningful comparisons between different marketing levers. Um, so also, in other words, like not a black box model, um, but still could capture um, all the complex relationships between all of the um, parts of these uh, parts of the model. And um, another requirement is the ability to constrain parameters using past measurements or information. So, um, you know, being able to, if we had past experimentation results, incrementality tests, A-B tests, um, being able to use that to uh, as the Bayesian priors on some of these marketing lever estimates um, to constrain uh, the impact um, based on what we've seen in experimentation. And um, a flexible model functional form that um, captured kind of all of these uh, marketing specific uh, effects. So nonlinear effects of marketing lever uh, synergies. So um, kind of halo effects of different channels and different campaigns on each other, um, nonlinear saturation effects of marketing. Um, so in other words, diminishing returns as you hit a certain number of impressions on, on certain uh, marketing levers or, or a certain amount of spend, and then time dependent effects. So um, in other words, the observations are not IID, uh, right? And so um, I want to focus a little more on that element since that's such a big part of um, Orbit is on the time series uh, aspect of it. So um, 
a lot of statistical models require the assumption that each observation is independent. And so in general, time series models are used when we know that assumption to be false. Uh, and we know that observations are time dependent. So whether that means the general trend, like there is like a growing number of signups or maybe a declining number of signups um, or seasonality, certain times of the year uh, or certain days of the week um, might may like have more signups or less signups. Um, those kinds of factors uh, make the response variable time dependent. Um, and unlike regular prediction tasks, um, forecasting is predicting future values in a series given the history of that series. Um, so in a strictly univariate forecasting task, this uh, left-hand side, y hat, is predicted using all of the past elements of, of y. Um, but in addition, forecast can also be a function of exogenous features. So like other uh, variables at this given time period here uh, that might be predictors. Um, and so in our particular model, we've implemented uh, this as a univariate series with exogenous features. Um, and just want to note that this is, there's other ways to do this. Like this is different than a multivariate time series where you're modeling um, a vector of time series here. We're only modeling one variable to be time dependent and the rest are um, external to that time period. Um, so before we dive into the model math, um, I want to go over the package design a little bit and how we intended it to be used and how we uh, intend to extend it into the future. Um, so this top level class that we have, um, the orbit class, the main class is kind of a simple uh, interface um, with a, a pretty high level of abstraction. Um, and we wanted it to be similar and familiar to other high level stats and ML packages in Python. Um, so an example call to this uh, layer is something like this. Um, you instantiate the model object. Here's the orbit model object. And then you can just call uh, object.fit and then object.predict on the training and the test data set um, where the training will uh, do the uh, stand uh, inference to learn the posteriors and then the predict will basically take those posterior estimates to um, you know, predict the y hats here. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's a large number of, of options to select here, but we, we've made defaults for a lot of them. Um, so you could basically specify, you know, the, the response column that you're trying to predict um, along with some of the exogenous uh, regressors. Um, and then on that, on this top layer object, we also um, built in a few utility functions for back testing and plotting. Um, uh, plotting for both the prediction and the parameter distribution. So uh, one of the functions for backtesting is, is to do train test splits based on some, you know, uh, input scheme options. So like rolling, expanding, how many splits you want, um, what's the maximum training period or minimum training period you want, um, what's the test period. And so um, this is kind of like the, like SKLearn's train test split, but, um, meant to be for time series data with a, um, a large variety of options. And then this kind of works in conjunction with another backtesting uh, function that we have, where then we backtest through all of the different splits um, to kind of, and, and then uh, can evaluate the, the metrics for that series. Um, and then we also have just a few simple plotting of the um, forecast and then um, of the parameters as well. Um, the next kind of middle layer, uh, this is where the actual model math lives, which is what Zushi will go through in a little bit. Um, we've implemented two family of models called LGT and DLT. Um, each model class has an associated stand code file, um, which just compiles the first time that this particular model is run in the package. So when the package installs, none of it actually compiles. It's when you um, run that model that it compiles. And um, the prediction math that uh, 
actually is done outside of Stan. So after the posterior um, parameters are estimated, um, that prediction math is also written directly into this class. And um, for our use case, we wrote it using um, PyTorch um, just for the kind of vectorization speed up. Um, so like if we actually did like full MCMC estimates of the posteriors, uh, we could just run a, a vectorized prediction of all of those um, posterior estimates to um, do the Y hat prediction. And then we can actually get a full interval of, of the prediction as well. Um, and then Finally, we have this kind of um, bottom layer that we uh, have for orbit, which interfaces with Stan to perform the actual model inference. Um, and this kind of abstracts away some of the calls to Stan. And uh, one reason we wrote the package this way is because we want to extend the number of models available in this kind of middle layer um, and allow many more classes of models to be uh, abstracted um, to give uh, to make this kind of like a, a easy high level um, Bayesian uh, modeling uh, package. And um, yeah, so up next, Sushi is going to talk a little bit more about the details of this middle layer and the math. Thanks, Steve. This is Zhishi. I will take over the remaining part of the presentation. Before that, maybe let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Zhishi Wang. I graduated from University of Wisconsin Medicine with a PhD degree in statistics. Right now, I'm working with Steve and Edwin at Uber's marketing data science team. Okay, now let's take a look at the mathematics behind the models in our orbit package. In terms of the modeling technique, we are using the Bayesian exponential smoothing technique. There are mainly two types of models in orbit. One is called SLGT model, which means the same local and global trend. On the left side, it's the prediction equation for SLGT. As you can see, there are five terms, which are level, local trend, global trend, signality, and error term. Here, the error term epsilon t follows the student t distribution, with a hierarchy sigma follows half Cauchy distribution. In the prediction equation, the global term is uh, a novel part based on our research and study by introducing such global trend it can better capture the dynamics in the trending actually this originates from an r package called rlgt written by slavic and his collaborators but the advantage of all it over iogt are twofold first with the help of the transformation the NUTS, aka no U turn sampler, is more efficient. Second, sigma in IOGT is re parameterized with YT, which introduces the dependency in noise generation. You know, when sigma is refined as an independent noise in SLGT, it can reduce the computation, computation cost by vectorizing the noise generation process. On the right side, there are the update equations. Basically, it follows uh, a triple exponential smoothing form. Here, rho L, rho B, and rho S are the smoothing parameters. In practice, they can follow the uniform distribution between 0 and 1. Here is another type of model in orbit called DL, DLT model, which means damped local trend model. As you can see in the prediction equation, we introduce an additional term, the regression term. It means the external regressors are allowed in DLT. On the right side, there are the update, update equations for the DLT. Here, DT means the global trend process. Choices of such process can be linear, log-linear, or logistic. Also, in the update equation for the slope, BT, we introduce another parameter called damp factor, which can allow the decay over time. This is pretty useful in practical modeling. Also, as mentioned, RT is the regression term. Beta G is the regressor coefficient. The price of beta G can be normal distribution with a hierarchy the sigma can follow half Cauchy distribution. 
By nature, orbit models are Bayesian state-state models, so we may want to do a brief comparison of orbit to other Bayesian state-state models. First, uh, by looking at the formulas above, orbit SLGT is a hybrid form of AR1 process and ETS AAA, where the weights are based on the local trend and the global trend coefficients. Also, orbit DLT is a variation of a classical ETS model. Both orbit models allow global trend estimation together with other parameters, which proves to be useful in capturing the dynamics, especially for weekly or monthly data. You know, profit from Facebook is a very popular package for time series forecasting and estimation. Compared to profit, orbit aims to solve stochastic trend. Instead, Profit trend is a sum of deterministic trend. With this said, our trend, uh, our trend estimation should be more flexible. Also, orbit signality evolves over time, while profit has fixed effect on signality. We did an extensive benchmark study by comparing orbit to other time series models using a wide range of datasets. Here are some benchmark study results. Basically, we compare the orbit models, LGT and DLT, to other two time series models, which are PROFIT and the signal RM. We used uh, four datasets. Out of these four datasets, two are internal. They are Uber's weekly rider and driver first trip. You can treat them as the new users acquired by Uber on a weekly basis. The other two datasets are external. They are famous M4 weekly and M3 monthly datasets. Here, each dataset contains the multiple, actually many time series. So in the model fitting process, within each dataset, the models considered here will run on each time series separately, and then we report the aggregated metrics. Here, the first table gives the average of SMIP. Symmetric mean absolute percentage error. Within the presences are the standard deviation of the estimations. The second table is a comparison between LGT and DLT with MCMC sampling method. As seen in the table, it shows that our models consistently deliver better accuracy than other candidate time series models. Also, orbit is relatively computationally more efficient. For example, the average compute time per, per series with uh, the MCMC sampling method and the prediction from a subset of M4 weekly data is about two and a half minutes. Meanwhile, the runtime for the same series using profit is about 10 minutes. So you can see there's a four times speed up in training. Here are the bar charts with error bars for Uber's two internal data sets, ride and driver weekly first trip data. LGT gives uh, the best uh, results among the four models considered here. It's a bit surprising to see that uh, profit estimation on Uber's driver first trip data have so many, um, I mean, have so big variance. You know, we have been working on orbit package for a long time. At this point, we are in an effort to make this package publicly available and open source it. It means it will be subject to the internal review process and Uber's uh, open source policy. Hopefully, we can see it uh, available on GitHub in the near future. By that time, we encourage the we welcome outside uh, collaborator, collaborators so we can improve this package all together. Meanwhile, we have some items to work on in the future to improve this package. The first thing we want to add is to extend it to multivariate time series so we can take into account the correlation and interaction between different time series 
Also, we can incorporate the more types of models apart from SLGT and the DLT models. Also, we can allow the do seasonality. For example, if it's daily data, we can allow both weekly seasonality and yearly seasonality. Here are some relevant links and resources related to package. You know we have a white paper available on RKF. In this paper, you will read more details from the theoretical side as well as the package design. So if you are interested, please take a read and let me know if you have any comments. Also, IOGT is an R package. Which is, which is more like a prototype version of orbit models. Here the link is the, is the current package for ILGT. To summarize, uh, today we want to introduce the orbit package for time series forecasting. This is a package mainly written in Python and Pyro. Based on our benchmark study, this package proves to be powerful and useful. So we encourage, uh, we encourage uh, people interested in this topic to take a try on uh, Orbit when it's public available on GitHub. Yeah, feel free to let us know if you have any comments or ideas. We can work together to improve the package. This would conclude today's presentation. Thank you all very much.